Hi students, I'll try in this educational video to technologically introduce the plate stress state, of course as simply and as clearly as possible. Ok, let's go. Well, first I'll try to explain the general concept of a 3D stress state and after I'll reduce this 3D stress state into 2D stress state in the case of a plate as to the structural element. Okay, let's consider a 3D object, of course, with a certain shape and a certain dimensions, and also certain mechanical properties summarized by the Young's modulus and the Poisson's coefficient. And let's consider an external loading applied on this 3D object. In this situation, uh, a distribution of internal 3D stress state will be created through this 3D object. This means that at any point of this 3D object we will have a 3D stress state. For example here let's consider the point indicated here by uh, the blue point and let's examine the 3D stress state in this point. Well if we consider uh, a cubic infinitesimal volume element around this point the 3D stress state at this point or in the cubic infinitesimal volume element around this point will be defined as it is depicted by the uh, figure that you see now on the left of this slide. And as you can note, uh, here we have two kinds of stresses. The first kind is the tensile stress sigma, and the second type is the shear stress denoted by tau. And uh, as you can note, sigma the tensile stress is applied along one direction, the direction x or y or z, and the shear stress tau is applied on a plane with a normal direction, of course, and along uh, one direction of this plane. So, for example, here tau xy is the shear stress in the plane uh, that the normal is x and uh, applied along the y direction. Uh, tau xz is the shear stress in the plane that the normal is x and uh, applied along the z direction and so on for the other uh, stresses. And we can define the concept of stress magnitude on the different faces of this cubic infinitesimal volume element around the, this studied point. For example, here, sigma superscript x refers to the stress magnitude on the face having the x direction as normal, and so on for sigma y, uh, sigma superscript y, and sigma superscript z. So this 3D stress state defined on this cubic infinitesimal volume element surrounding the studied point can be summarized into a stress matrix also called stress tensor. And this stress matrix uh, refers to a 3D stress state. The diagonal terms here refer to normal stresses and the extra diagonal terms refer to shear stresses. The normal stresses are also called tensile stresses. And the shear stresses here are the tangential stresses. Please pay attention here, the stress state should be symmetric. So tau xy will be equal to tau yx and tau xz will be equal to tau zx and tau yz will be equal to tau zy. Now let's consider a plate and an external loading applied on this plate. Since the plate is by definition a structural element that the third dimension which is the thickness is negligible compared to the other dimensions, so the whole plate can be reduced into a middle uh, surface uh, highlighted uh, in red here. So the situation become an external loading applied on a 2D element. This situation will create a surface stress distribution through these 2D elements. Let's examine so the stress state at uh, a considered point like the point highlighted here in red. Well, if we consider a square infinitesimal surface element surrounding the considered point, notice here that the infinitesimal element is surface, not a volume, uh, like the case of 3D object. 
So in this case, the stress state applied on this uh, infinitesimal uh, surface element will be as it is depicted by the figure that you see now uh, on the right of this slide. And you can notice that the stresses along the third dimension, which is uh, the Z direction in this case, are neglected. So uh, it's a 2D stress state. So you can uh, deduce that the 3D stress state is reduced into 2D stress state since the, all the stresses along the third dimension are neglected. Now I will talk about the transformation of a 2D stress state from one frame of reference to another frame of reference. And based on the figure that you can see now on this slide, we have a 2D stress state and we have two frames of reference. Uh, x y and x prime y prime and uh, the frame of reference x y x prime y prime is oriented by an angle theta with regard to the frame of reference x y now as you can deduce from this matrix formula we can obtain the stress state uh, the 2d stress state in the frame of reference x prime y prime knowing the 2d stress state in the frame of reference x, y via a certain transformation matrix having uh, cos uh, theta as a diagonal term and uh, sine theta and minus sine theta as extra diagonal terms. This matrix writing of the transformation uh, of the stress state from uh, a frame of reference to another frame of reference can be transformed into uh, algebraic uh, formula permitting to determine the stresses in the frame of reference and the new frame of reference based on or in function of the stresses in the initial frame of reference as it is depicted by the formula that you see now in this slide. Now it is to note here that there is an angle theta asterisk determined by the formula that you see now in this slide and uh, this uh, theta asterisk permit uh, to uh, obtain a new frame of reference x asterisk y asterisk and in this frame of reference uh, tau x asterisk y asterisk will be equal to zero this is very important because in this case uh, the stress state will be diagonalized and uh, the diagonal terms uh, refer to the principal stresses while uh, the directions uh, of the frame of reference which are x asterisk and y asterisk are the principal directions. It's to note also that uh, in the framework of uh, the 2D stress state uh, transformation there are some stress invariants. What does it mean stress invariants? A stress invariant is a mathematical quantity related to the 2D stress state matrix that does not change uh, even uh, where, uh, even in the case where the frame of reference changes. And these stress invariants are the quantity that you can see now in this slide. And you can note that uh, the quantity I1 is the trace of the 2D stress state matrix and I2 is the determinant of the 2D stress state matrix. So these stress invariants will not change uh, even in the case where the frame of reference in which the stress state uh, is determinate changes. This educational video takes and please mention all your remarks and suggestions in the comments because it will be very beneficial for uh, further understanding the technological and scientific content of this educational video. Thank you very much for your attention.